When we talk extreme budget processors, you may think a Pentium dual core or something more dire like a Pentium D. However, for the same price, you can actually get something that's actually a lot better. With two cores and four threads, a stock speed of over 3 GHz and easy to find motherboards. Here we have the Core i3-550, which I got for £2. And in fact, they still have some in stock while I record all this. It was released in quarter two of 2010 and it sold for around £100 or US$117 US upon release. It has two cores with four threads that come clocked in at 3.2 GHz. And it's of course based on the 32 nanometer Clarkdale architecture, so it's still very relevant today. It uses the LGA1156 socket, which has some relatively cheap motherboards today, as long as you don't mind not being able to overclock on them. Nowadays it's very comparable to that of a simple Pentium G4400 without hyperthreading, as in 3 Mark, they scored pretty much the exact same score. However, do keep in mind that the Pentium uses faster DDR4 and can be bought new so you do get that warranty with it, unless of course you buy from CEX in the UK or the US, in which case you get a two year warranty with your i3 anyway. However, in those very memory intensive situations that the DDR4 of the Pentium can help out with, things may go in the Pentium's favour. However, for real world gaming, they should be fairly comparable. I struggled to find many real reviews of this online, however it featured a lot of higher priced pre-builts due to the fact its performance was comparable to that of i5s of the time, which many people opt for this i3 over it. In fact, it was able to beat out heavily overclocked Core 2 chips at a very nice price point, increasing the amount of people that wanted to convert their old Core 2 Duo systems or Pentium D chips, which were a little bit slow and wanted something with a better upgrade path and this was really the call for those. However, if you were using a Pentium D back then, this thing was a huge step up and something they should have done a long time ago. We're going to be pairing it with 6GB of DDR3 RAM and the AMD Radeon R9285, so we can see exactly how the CPU will perform, especially in those newer titles. So let's get on with some benchmarks. Up first we have CSGO, which ran at a buttery smooth 137 FPS average, and didn't really dip below this. The 1% lows down to 77 FPS and 0.1% lows of 49 FPS were pretty good, so stutter felt pretty much non-existent with this CPU, and it constantly stayed above that 60 FPS threshold for the majority of the gameplay. Definitely ideal in a competitive game like this where you don't want to drop those frames. Following this we have Dota 2, something people have asked me to start benchmarking, and it ran at a nice 93 FPS average while I was using the medium preset in 1080p. The 1% lows show a nice 54 FPS, and the 0.1% lows hit a 30 FPS average, so definitely above the threshold of playable at all times. For the vast amount of time though, the gameplay was very smooth and great for the £2 we played. Grand Theft Auto V is still an extremely popular game, so we may as well see what it can do here. And with GTA V valuing single core performance as much as multi-threaded performance, I can't see any reason why this system wouldn't do well. So in 1080p with high settings we achieved a nice 46 FPS average, with 1% lows down to 31 FPS, and so far for the vast amount of time, the game looked great and ran great. With momentary dips, we did hit around 26 FPS, which is shown in the 0.1% lows. Finally, we do have a AAA game by Bethesda, which is Fallout 4, and it ran with a great 55 FPS average, with 1% lows down to 30 FPS and 0.1% lows down to 21 FPS. But given the fact that even in heavy combat, the game does tend to slow down on even the best machines, it wasn't a bad experience at all. But this doesn't stop the game being an extremely playable experience on the processor, whether you're in towns or cities, or just adventuring around the wastes. And a lot of people like to use their PC for recording and streaming nowadays. And as for Times264 encoding, we have OBS with a 720p canvas, recording Half-Life 2 on the highest settings, and it gave us well over 60 FPS in game, and we were able to get a decent enough recording with the 3500 kilobit a second bitrate. Of course, in those newer titles, you may have to drop that bitrate down, but you will likely see playable FPS in games from CSGO all the way through to Dota should you want to stream them. So in the end, all it comes down to is, is this processor worth it? Well, I am a big fan of the LGA1156 platform thanks to how cheap the CPUs are and the power they still have in 2017. In fact, the CPU was so good that I ended up using it for the entire time I had the system out, from running games to even some more intensive work. A standard LGA1156 board will set you back around 30 to 40 pounds, or the equivalent of that in dollars, 
and will work with DDR3 and also work with processors up to the mighty i7s that came out on this socket giving you a basic upgrade path to something with a bit more power and also 4 cores with hyperthreading, so if you can get one cheap it's definitely worth it in my eyes, but mainly for the sake of upgradability, compared to what's on the LGA775 platform which a lot of people would usually consider, but you are very limited with what you can upgrade to. Thank you very much for watching, Good night. And if you found this interesting why not like and subscribe for more videos like it, the next large video is nearly done so do stick around for that.